Once you've created a mass element, you can then go ahead and start looking at analyzing your designs a little bit more thoroughly. One of the tools that you can use for this is called mass floors. Mass floors basically divide a mass. After you divide the mass, you'll notice that in a lot of cases, it will divide the mass that you see here based on how many levels you have within the project. Let's go ahead and take a look at dividing one. We're going to pick up basically this box element, and I'm going to the Massing and Site tab. When I pick the box and get onto the Modify Mass, you'll notice here that there's one here called Mass Floors. Go ahead and pick it. Since there are six levels within the project here, I can apply a mass floor to each level. I'll go ahead and do that. And graphically, you'll see that there is a floor that's been created within this mass. Let's go ahead and do it as well for the cylinder. We'll pick that, do the same thing again. Then we'll come over here and pick up the pyramid, go to mass floors on model do that one as well. So now each one of these mass elements has a full range of mass floors that have been established. This is the graphical display that you see and it basically is a slice uh, through the mass and it's been defined again by the levels that are within the project. Now the other thing that these mass floors are useful for is that they also provide some geometric information. You have some associations with dimensions and volumes and things of that nature that are worthwhile looking into. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what those are. I'm going to take this one that I have here that I'm kind of highlighting. I'm going to select it. When I do that, you'll notice that in properties, there's under dimensions a number of different properties that this mass floor has. All right, so let's take a look at what each one of these represents. First of all, you have floor perimeter. This information can be used to create a rough cost estimate based on dimensioning. So if you were looking at figuring out, you know, the size and shape of each one of these floors, you would have some linear dimensions to work with. The other one that you have here is floor area. The floor area of a mass floor, if you notice here, square feet. You can come up with rough estimates to look at square footages for, you know, flooring and things of that nature. And you can also use it for ratios for different design options that you might be interested in exploring. The other one here, which is exterior surface area, is a different kind of calculation. It is a rough cost estimate kind of look at the exterior face of the building is in square footage. So if you wanted to count between level one and level two, what the surface area is on the exterior, you've got that. You also have down here floor volume. And with floor volume, that's in cubic units, if you can see there. This kind of information is useful if you have to figure out something like an HVAC load or something of that nature. Okay, so basically that's what we have. As you notice that uh, each one of these mass elements now has a number of mass floors. Don't confuse mass floors with an actual floor. It's not. This is a good start to begin to analyze each one of your designs by going ahead and creating the mass element shape and then going ahead and applying a mass floor to it.